Hey everybody, Coach Burke with Blockers Offensive Line Academy. Um, thank you so much for uh, tuning in tonight. I got a special guest, uh, Jarrell Worthy, ENFL defensive lineman, um, played for uh, Michigan State uh, in college, and then uh, was drafted um, by the Green Bay Packers um, in 2012, the 51st uh, draft pick overall, 2012 with the Green Bay Packers. He's, he's played at a few different teams in the NFL. And uh, fortunately, I've been very fortunate. Um, Jarrell played for me uh, as a high school coach. And, uh, you know, I'm just excited to have this opportunity to get him on here, um, you know, get a chance to talk a little O-line, D-line ball, and, uh, you know, learn from some of his, his experiences. And, and that's one of the big things um, is always looking to get – uh, guys, you know, educated up on our O-line, D-line play and making sure that uh, everything goes well with that. So we're going to go ahead and bring Jarrell in. Jarrell. <laughs> My man, how you doing? I'm doing great. How you doing today? Man, I'm doing good. It's great to see you. Most definitely. Been watching your stuff, watching Instagram all the time and you know, yeah. checking you and the family and everything going good down there in Georgia. I'm kind of jealous of the nice weather. Man, that, man, that's the <laughs> only thing to be jealous of. I mean, uh, I mean they're watching you, with, watching you guys. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying with everything that's going on, man, and our, our governor opened back up the state. So it's everybody's kind of on, on eggshells down here a little bit, man. But, um, you know, everything as far as the family is going great. Um, we actually get our little ones back tomorrow. They uh, they they escape for like three days um, to the <laughs> mountains with uh, their grandparents. They have a little cabin, so um, awesome. It's been it's been quiet around the halls a little bit, and so we get them back tomorrow. So I'm excited to see them. That's awesome. Yeah, I've seen the videos you posted with the kids. Uh, you guys are out like uh, out in the woods and the river and everything, and I'm just like, man, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the the great the great part is like my wife is in real estate, and so. Uh, she had an opportunity to go show a how uh, show go show some land over in Alabama. It was on the edge of Alabama and Georgia, and um, so it sits on 22 acres. And she asked us that we want to make the trip with her, and so we went out there and we looked at this land um, that one of her clients wanted to to check out. And so, man, it was it was phenomenal, man. I mean, the the awesome. waterfalls, the rocks, um, it was a really a great a really great experience for our family. So you said I look at that land like we have to move over there. <laughs> hey, look, I, was, I, I, I pulled her to the side afterwards, asking her about the price of that land. Just because, I mean, you know, you I think um, you know from where we grew up, man, being in the city and stuff like that, uh, you don't necessarily get a chance to really appreciate outdoors and all the waterfalls and the nature and everything that it has to offer. So it's been great, man. Home ownership and things like that has been great for us. <laughs> Definitely. So what else are you up to now? What, what are you doing these days? Man, so training, uh, working with my wife. I'm trying to study this real estate game so uh, we can have an opportunity to uh, possibly open up a brokerage in the next uh, five to five to eight years. Um, she's doing quite well as far as being a real estate agent down here and things have, and things have has picked up uh, quite well for her. Uh, me, on the other hand, I'm working on a new podcast that I'm going to be coming out with. It's going to be uh, pretty innovative, so I'm excited about that. <laughs> Um, I also have, uh, you know, I'm waiting on the new opportunity with the league, um, as well as I work with uh, a, a network called Beyond the Game. It's, uh, it's a group of athletes and, and young entrepreneurs and investors that come together um, to make good de uh, investment decisions and uh, financial, uh, <clears throat> I guess, you know, giving athletes a chance at financial literacy. Okay, awesome. I've I seen the thing like, uh, what is it, the Worthy to Win uh, Performance Academy? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So we're working on that, man. Uh, me and my me and my partner Jarius Win. Uh, he's a Super Bowl champion, unlike myself. <laughs> I, I, he got he got it right before I got there. Um, we have an academy in which we train offense and defense alignment. Um, you know, more defense alignment than offense alignment. I'm still <laughs> I'm still I'm still continuing to learn. Um, we have to be honest, but you know, at the end of the day, it's it's a it's a um, it's a phenomenal academy. Uh, we 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 have uh, great minds, and you know we're continuing to learn. And um, you know, as far as well as the as the game innovates, we have to try to innovate with it. So we're excited. Definitely, it's kind of funny you talk about the O line versus the D line. And I was actually talking with my buddies last night. He coaches uh, down in Mississippi. Yeah. And uh, and he's like, hey, I seen you about to go, you know, do this uh, live chat with a uh, Jarrell. I said, yeah, yeah, definitely. And I said, yeah. I said, I'm kind of an idiot. I said, you know, when he came to the high school when I was coaching. 
brought him over to the offensive line. I said, he wanted nothing to do with the offensive line. So I was like, get him over to defense. Get him away from me. I said, obviously, I didn't know what I was doing at that time. Uh, no, man, no we, we had some fun, man. I think, um, you know, I, I cherish those battles a lot. Um, you guys, you guys helped me mature uh, a lot quicker than I wanted to. So, you know, definitely helped me out as far as my journey is concerned. Awesome. Now, I, I, a lot of times I've seen your posts, see a lot of different uh, Husky pictures. I know you guys yeah. a lot of Huskies and do some Husky res rescue. So yeah, what was yeah, that? Yeah, me and my wife, man, we are excited. We we uh, we uh, run a rescue uh, in correlation with uh, Mush Rescue. Um, me and my wife, we have an opportunity to foster these these uh, Siberian Huskies. Um, we had a Husky that we lost a couple years ago. He was our first Husky that we ever had before we even had children. And so, you know, experiencing su such a tough loss, uh, it really uh, motivated us to, you know, reach out to others that are in need. And my wife, you know, really kind of put it on me and I just kind of ran with it, man. I mean, awesome. Huskies are Huskies are a dog with a very uh, specific personality. So uh, <laughs> they definitely can cause a lot of trouble and you have to be patient with them. But at the end of the day, they're, they're charismatic and they're fun. Awesome. Um, a couple of things, you know, I put a thing out for people to shoot me any questions to ask you and uh, yeah. got a handful of different questions. Yeah. Uh, so the first one I wanted to touch base with you. I had a defense lineman reach out to me and said, you know, when you're watching film and you're studying film of offensive line and so forth, what is it that you're looking at uh, as a defense lineman studying that film, getting ready for your game? Um, I think, you know, it's important for all defense linemen, uh, number one, to know formations. I think if you have an opportunity to know the game from in, uh, from inside out, knowing what an offense is thinking before uh, they approach the line, then you can have an opportunity to, to have an advantage. I think from a personal standpoint, um, when I'm looking at offense alignment, I'm looking at splits, um, weight on the hands, weight on the feet. Um, communication, you know, whether or not uh, it's a pass protection or a run a running down. And um, just having an opportunity to look at their tendencies as far as uh, body language. I mean, office alignment, you know, um, they're big guys like us. You know, some can move well, some can't move well. I mean, it goes both ways. But um, the ones that doesn't, the ones that don't have an opportunity to necessarily move well, they have to get themselves in a certain position before um, before they have to execute their play. Definitely. Now, throughout your time, you know, you played at Michigan State, had a few different stops in the NFL, had a good career there. Who's the best offensive lineman you have faced throughout your career? At any level, man. Uh, man, um, I would necessarily. I didn't necessarily would have an individual. Um, I think one of the most shocking experiences was the San Francisco Super Bowl team. Um, so that was my rookie year, and um, we had to face them week one. And I was only <laughs> scheduled to be in on third down. I was only supposed to be in on the pass rush situations. <laughs> Guy in front of me gets hurt second play of the game. And so I'm in on all the base packages. And, like, I have went through this whole summer of I've come in um, and, you know, I'm leaving the Big Ten, so I'm heavy. They want me to lose weight to play third down, so I cut the weight. And then all of a sudden the guy that plays base gets hurt, and he's out for a while. And, man, I'm in there in those base packages, and I'm, I feel like I'm a little light in the can. And, um, <laughs> You know, that offensive line with Frank Gore, uh, you know, at the running back position, Joe Staley, IU Potty, um, you know, those guys really, uh, they were really tough. Um, I think far as an individual, um, probably the most consistent uh, competitor was probably Marshall Yonda. I really, I really respected his game out in Baltimore. Um, great competitor, great person. And um, I, I don't know, man, I think, um, I think more so collectively, um, when Adrian Peterson was was doing his thing, <laughs> my rookie year, man, he came in and he won MVP that year, and it was really uh, a sight to see. Cause I'm I'm telling you, that was the first time in my career um, that I had really, I I really was like, oh, this is a true Hall of Famer. Like, <laughs> right here, like, so, <laughs> so. Awesome, no, definitely it was great times, man. It was it was um, exciting times, and I, I definitely had a great time. Awesome. So shifting over to your college career. Um, what are some of the games that really stick out to you that, like, you totally remember? And, you know, for me, I mean, I sit there and I think back, um, you know, when you played Ohio State in the horseshoe and, yeah. you know, one of fellow Wayne graduates, Braxton Miller's the quarterback, and you get a sack and, you know, all that good stuff. But, I mean, what else um, really sticks out to you when you look back and say, man, that game right there, that that was it? Um, man, we had, a, we had a couple of them. I think number one, um, I was a young pup when we beat Notre Dame in overtime on a trick play. It was really, 
Um, you know, they had all the glitz and glamour. They had Ryan <laughs> Kelly. They had the whole, you know, the whole aura about themselves. Um, that was one of the most exciting wins that I had ever had um, that I contributed to. Because, um, you know, my first year I was redshirted, so I didn't necessarily um, get the chance to uh, – capture the Michigan moment when we first went down there to Ann Arbor and um, Javon Ringer ran all over him and and it was really an exciting time but from there on out man you know playing Michigan was one of the most exciting times you know beating them in the big house uh, with the type of history and culture that they come with and the the type of rivalry that we have it was uh, it was an exciting time um, Ohio State was emotional just from being being 40 minutes 45 minutes down the road man and you know, I think, you know, as a as a high school player, I really tried to do everything I could to get up the road because we had a couple guys funnel up that way from Wayne, um, you know, prior to my uh, departure. And so, you know, when that didn't happen and I went to Michigan State, like I was excited to be a part of a, a Michigan State team. Um, but when we got a chance to go into the horseshoe, man, it was really an emotional time for me. So Definitely. I was excited. And that's like with Michigan State. I mean, what's your thoughts, you know, with the change of the coach Dan Antonio retiring? Um, I know for me, my brother personally covers Michigan State and had a good relationship with Dan Antonio and the coaches. And for me, I mean, Dan Antonio did some great things for me as far as when I put on a satellite camp, when satellite camps were allowed, he brought the whole staff and he came down. I mean, to get a coach like that to come to a first year camp was like, you know, starstruck type of thing. Um, so just kind of, you know, what, what's your thoughts on, you know, with him retiring and the state of the program and then also, you know, any Dan Antonio memories you have and stuff that you'd like to share? Oh, man, we have, I've got so many memories. But <laughs> I think, um, you know, it's, it was just really fun to experience such a great person. Um, I think that really goes unnoticed. You know, a lot of people talk about the wins and the losses and, you know, the highs that Michigan State had and, you know, beating Michigan, you know, four or five years in a row. And then, um, you know, those those elevating to Rose Bowl's win, Rose Bowl win and college uh, football playoff appearances. Uh, excuse me. I think um, a lot of people just uh, fail to realize, like, how great of a person he was. Um, my senior year at Wayne, you were coaching. Um, you know, I had a knee injury. I didn't necessarily know what I was going to do with my career. Um, you know, behind the scenes, there were teams that said, you know, they were wanting to offer half scholarships. And then there was teams that, you know, say, we'll reevaluate you at the end of the year, you know, and, and Coach D'Antonio stuck by me. And I think uh, my greatest memory of him was just the way he recruited me. He just said that I don't want people to, that aren't that I don't want people to come here that aren't willing to help change the culture. And like no other coach recruited me like that. It was just always, you know, hey. You know, we got all these stuff here. This is how our uniform looks. Look at this stadium and get some pictures mm -hmm. and stuff. But um, Coach D'Antonio really had a had a mission, and he uh, and he executed that mission. And so it was really exciting to be a part of it. Awesome. Um, one of the things I was talking with a couple of my buddies that are uh, offensive line transfer or tra offensive line coaches uh, at the college level, and I don't know how much you follow with some of the NCAA things, and they got a lot of rules that they're looking at changing. Uh, one being uh, where student athletes can get paid for their likeness. Um, I know for me, every time one of those rules change, I go, man, that would have been nice if that would happen when I was playing. <laughs> um, but one of the rules that uh, is proposed to change is the transfer rule to, to allow student athletes to make that one transfer without sitting out. Um, what, what, what's your take on, on that transfer rule if that goes through? And, and what, you know, what, what's your thoughts? Um, I, think, I think it's kind of a catch-22 just because from a – from an athlete standpoint, you would love to have an opportunity to go play somewhere else if the situation um, hasn't presented itself. Um, but at the same time, you just don't want to open the floodgates for, you know, athletes just running out the door when, when times get tough. I think um, college teaches you so much about yourself in, in times of adversity, um, in times of struggle, in times of having less than. Um, you find out a lot about yourself. And I think, uh, you know, if I had that opportunity to – to transfer when I didn't come in and play right away, then, I mean, I don't necessarily know where I would be today. Um, you know, there's a lot of my, my, my peers um, that I'm dear friends with today, you know, that has so much talent, but opted to take that road. Um, I, you know, I think if you have opportunities to stick it out, man, and, and grow from those, from those, uh, those tough times, man, you'll have an opportunity to really find out a lot about yourself. But, um, I don't necessarily personally, I think from a coach's standpoint, I don't like it um, just because, you know, a coach can come in and um, he can sell you on a whole dream. A lot of players uh, really buy into coaches nowadays. Uh, you know, the, the, 
the um, appearance of them, the, what they can do, uh, their position of power. Um, you know, like a Nick Saban, if he just ups and was just jumping from college to college, I think, you know, a lot of people will have a lot to say about that. So from a coach's standpoint, I think it's very – um, I don't, I don't, I don't like it, but I think from my player standpoint, um, you should have, you should have that option. Um, but at the same time, I think you should be required to have a certain academic level to be able to transfer. Like if you're doing what you have to do in the classroom um, and you have an issue with, you know, with football, then, you know, that's a different role. But if you're not doing anything on both ends, then I just don't think that you should have an opportunity to just freely walk away. And I'm going to take you way, 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 way many years back. So in high school and uh, going through the recruiting process, um, you know, one of the things here lately, and I'm sure you've been watching it just like everybody else, the last dance. Um, and, and the one big thing coming out of that for me personally is the type of competitor Michael Jordan was. And, you know, sometimes, you know, someday the, the younger generation gets a bad rep for, you know, different things. And, and one of the things I always challenge the kids I train with is about competing. Um, you know, there's some people out there, there's different camps and combines and things that go on uh, locally and throughout the, the country where some kids go to. Now, some of them, yeah, they're trying to get your money. They're two, three hundred dollars. Don't go to that. But right. Some aren't, aren't real expensive. They're, they're, you know, they're 25, 50 bucks or whatever. And I always tell my guys, you know, here's a chance for you to go and compete and, and show your skills and get yourself better for when you do go to, um, you know, college camps in the summer. And what's your take as far as going back to when you were getting recruited and going through that process and, and what, what, what's your thoughts and what recommendations would you give the young guys looking to get recruited who are kind of in the same boat, like you were saying, you know, may only get a half offer, may not get that offer you're really looking for, um, you know, what's your take on all that? Um, I think if you have the, the more opportunities you have to be seen, you have to take advantage of those. Um, I think personally, when I first came to Wayne and I transferred, you know, I was a young pup. Uh, I was just tagging along with a lot of the older guys when Coach Mitten was going off to those camps. And, um, you know, they didn't necessarily know about me. But I think just having that experience, it taught me that I had a lot of work to do. It taught me that um, there was always somebody who was better than me. Um, and having that type of competition and knowing that that certain person is out there, like that fuels you as a competitor, um, you know, I think a lot of guys get caught up in what you, and what we see on social media, you know, where there's a lot of, um, you know, high school sports is getting covered like it's never been covered before. And so you see a lot of these guys and these prep stars and these guys that are, you know, big name people. And, um, you know, that's all you see. But then there's some guy that's in an alleyway, you know, dribbling a basketball. There's a guy that's, you know, lifting heavy weights and not, you know, and not necessarily, you don't necessarily know about him and, until you show up at those camps, until he just so happens to jump in the truck and, and uh, you know what I mean, and tag along. And so I think at the end of the day, man, anytime you have an opportunity to showcase your skills and, and be in a competitive type of uh, atmosphere, it can only make you better as a player. Definitely. Um, talking about social media, I got a question there uh, from my brother talking about what would you tell kids about social media use? And you use social media – and, you know, you went, it appears you went from being a Twitter guy to more of an Instagram guy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so man, what would you I tell Twitter got me in trouble, man. Like, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, during my college days, man, Twitter got me in trouble going at those fans and stuff. And, like, you just always <laughs> felt like you had something to say. And even if you would come with something factual, like, they'll just, you know, people will continue to try to bring you down for no apparent reason. And so um, I think, you know, growing up and, and how um, – how, I think uh, implemented social media is like how we when when cell phones first came out around our time and then you got the advancement with laptops and stuff. It was just like something you had to have. Like and so with social media, I mean, going all the way down to, you know, I have nieces that are seven, eight years old talking about I need the IG account, all this other stuff. And I think, um, you know, as an athlete, as a student athlete, when you have somewhere to go, man, like that should be the main focus, um, you know. One thing I took from, you know, the last dance and, you know, in reference to Michael Jordan is that um, everything that he did was about his game. Like, OK, at the end of the day, you might say what you want over here about this. You might say over here about that. Um, I don't need to publicly come out and speak on this. I don't need to publicly post a picture or show you guys what I'm or who the, the type of people I'm hanging out with. But when them lights come on, this is, you know, this is that type. This is what you're getting from me. And I think. At the end of the day, athletes need to take 
ownership of what they're doing. They need to take accountability for what they do off the field as well as on the field. Like your game should be the most important thing that you should focus on. And when you have an opportunity to write the narrative for your social media brand, you have to do it in the most positive way um, because you don't necessarily want, you know, recruiters and, and coaches and, uh, you know, mentors in your community scrolling across your page. And, you know, if you're a young girl, student athlete, seeing, you know, doing things that the young women shouldn't be doing, or, or if you're with your homeboys and you guys are doing some mannish or going live and doing stuff that ain't, um, you know, that's not respectable to your brand. I think um, you guys got to take accountability for that stuff. Um, use social media. Do not, don't let it use you and, um, and just, and just keep, keep that in mind. Awesome. Now being down in Georgia, and I don't know if you get a chance to go out and see any high school games. I'm sure you see things on TV and so forth. What's the big thing you think, you know, seeing the difference from Ohio to Georgia's, you know, down South is getting a whole lot of more kids uh, recruited, going to college, uh, talked with a couple of buddies of mine where they're like, you know, hey, the same kid in Ohio, if he's down in Florida, Alabama, he's going power five, where in Ohio he may go to the group of five schools. Um, so what, what do you think that difference is and, and so forth uh, from what you're able to see being down there? Um, I think, number one, um, one of the most important things I've noticed down here is parent participation um, from – from the youth all the way up to the high schoolers, um, I noticed that a lot of parents, uh, especially in my community and around our community, are actively involved with their kids and their sports. And I think at the end of the day, there's a high level of competition down here, just like there is up in Ohio. Um, you know, one of the advantages is obviously spring ball as far as, far as the football is concerned. Uh, these guys get the opportunity to play in the months in which it's snow on the ground up in, up in Ohio and, you know, Michigan and those areas. Um, so they have an advantage in that, in that regard. Uh, but I just think at the end of the day, um, what I see down here as compared to Ohio is just that um, no matter where I'm at, kids are outside and they're competing. Um, I don't, I rarely, you know, being down here in the South, I rarely see um, kids. I rarely see parks empty. I think um, from, from basketball to soccer, I mean, I mean, coming from an urban neighborhood, no offense, I didn't, I didn't see a lot of kids that looked like me that would skateboard. And they, I mean, now the park, the parks are full down here, and you know, tennis courts are full, baseball fields are full, and um, everybody's actively engaged. And I think um, the only difference is that kids down here realize, and parents realize that, uh, like teaching your your son or your daughter a new trait um you know whether that's fixing the sink or cooking or something like that you can take advantage of having athletic talents and i think the uh, a lot of these parents and things like that down here see that and they just want to feel that fire for their children um and it creates a, a competitive atmosphere and it's i'm very excited about it with uh i'm very excited about it with my son man because he i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of kids his age five six years old that are doing things that I mean, I, I'm literally like like jaw dropping when I'm out there at the field watching these kids six years old hit the ball all the way back to the fence or um, coming down the court and they're shooting threes and, you know, and they're six, seven years old and they're doing it with confidence. And so I think um, that's the only difference between, you know, Southern sports and, and you know, sports up in Ohio is just the um, – I think the competitive nature is a little bit higher just because a lot of these kids think that, um, this is their their opportunity to really make something of themselves. Gotcha. Now, another thing we kind of share a little in common is, uh, um, I believe the show was called American Muscle, if I'm correct, yeah. uh, with uh, Mike Barwis. Yeah, and, that's uh, my Barwis guy. Methods. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, Mike was uh, my strength coach at West Virginia. And uh, I know when I saw you one time after I saw you on the show, I'm like, oh, you're training over with Barwis. You're like, yeah. oh, man. So kind of, kind of talk about some of the different training things you did there and, and how that helped you develop as a player. Um, and, and, you know, just, I, I know for me, the mental toughness side of things, you know, and it's one of those things where some people are sometimes like, man, you, you just don't care. And it's like, it ain't that I don't care. I've just learned to totally cut things off and, and, you know, to be able to do what my task at hand is and not let those things affect me. And um, so what kind of things did you pick up working with him? And, you know, he trains so many guys in different leagues and, you know, he's very well known and respected. Um, well, number one, one, number one, he preaches family within everything. I think, um, you know, having his wife and kids there every day and, you know, seeing them being a part of his journey, you can tell that, you know, he coaches us hard, but he, you know, he loves and, and has a, a, a total respect for what he does at home. 
Um, he preaches family, uh, mental toughness. He puts you through some workouts that definitely, you know, challenge you. I think, you know, I've had, I've been blessed to be around some, you know, some great, you know, shrimp coaches and, um, you know, Mike Barr was being one, Ken Manning up in Michigan State being another. And, um, you know, when you have the great ones, they find ways to to push your buttons and they just take you to places that where you never think you never thought you could reach. And so, um, you know, Mike teaches you to be accountable as a man, um, as a father, as a husband. Um, and he teaches you all that within, you know, our workout, because that's what we talk about. You know, we could you know, we could be in other settings where we're talking about, you know, being out and partying and you know, what cars we drive and, you know, and the houses and the trips that we take. But I think, you know, the most important tar- part is, you know, even though he's he's kicking my tail and I'm out of breath, he's he's talking to me, looking at me, hey, man, look at your family over there. Like, look at what's, you know, the most important thing that you have, you know, in, in your life. And, um, you know, he's asking you questions like, how how hard are you willing to, to, to work for them? Or, you know, are you willing to really sacrifice and show your son how to get it done? And so, um, you know, Mike just takes you to a level um, <clears throat> mentally and spiritually that you didn't think you would get to, uh, which makes the workouts enjoyable. Because um, even though you, even though you are, you know, dead tired and things like that, you realize that, hey, I'm I'm actually making some some uh, some strides. So that's like uh, the other night. I, uh, it was really cool. Um, it's been a couple weeks now, actually. Um, a lot of West Virginia former players. We did a Zoom meeting. Yeah, they had all kinds of people in there, and Pac-Man Jones was in there talking to Well Divine, yeah. talking about how Mike Barr was, was the one that, you know, like Pac-Man's like, you know, I never touched a waiter, did anything until I got to West Virginia, and here comes Mike, you know. And uh, so it was just good having those conversations and, and kind of hearing all of them talk about that. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and then just knowing how he impacted everybody's lives. And, and then also it was just cool for all of us to, you know, get back together and, you know, see some of the greats. Daryl Talley was in the conversation, Pat McAfee, yeah. I mean, Man, so you might have was... had some of the greatest players uh, in college football down there in West Virginia. And mm-hmm. I can tell you, um, you know, going down there and seeing, you know, uh, you know, Pat White and Steve Slayton and then, you know, Will Johnson was my was one of my guys growing up. And, you know, seeing all that type of glitz and glamour and then watching them put up like 60 points against uh, yeah. Connecticut, like <laughs> it definitely was a crazy atmosphere down there, man. Y'all That's like t- today on social media, they put a thing out about who was the best college football player to wear number five. And, and then I was laughing because all since my post and said, man, we got Pat White trending again. Yeah. And, uh, and it's one of those things like, how do, how do you argue? The man went to four bowl games and won four bowl games and two of them being a BCS game. Yeah. You know, you, you got to give the man credit where credit's due. Nah, he was unbelievable as a player. Um, unbelievable. He's unbelievable now as a coach. And so, uh, you know, he's definitely uh, – I've trained with him with Mike, man. A lot of those guys come back to Mike, mm-hmm. um, you know, during the season. We had the opportunity to train with Noel Devine and all that. I It was crazy definitely. to see – that type of speed, you know, on a daily basis in the weight room, man. He, no, he definitely, definitely. definitely. That's awesome. Um, so kind of shifting back, talk a little bit of line play. So when you're going against an offensive lineman, and, and I know this is a little different than a receiver DB type of conversation, but going against an offensive lineman, what are some of the things that, you know, and, and not to put you out on an island, but to say, man, I, I don't want to see that out of an offensive lineman. What are the things, you know, the different type of techniques or things they may use that make you just kind of like, dang, man, I'm really going to have to deal with this dude because he's able to do this. What what Uh, are some of those things? I think for me, you know, anything one-on-one, you definitely – you always want to have leverage. Um, You never want to let an office alignment get up under you. I think the toughest part is, um, you know, having those guys that are good um, at leverage but doesn't have a lot of height to them. Because I've run into a lot of I've run into a lot of those guys, and you know they they make a, a job pretty tough for you when it comes to um, you know gaining leverage um, from a from a run game standpoint. You know anything you as a defensive lineman, you always want to uh, demand a double team. Like if you're if you're out there playing and you don't you know you're not playing well enough to where guys want to double you, then you got to step your game up. I think as a as an interior defensive lineman. Um, your game should always be on display to where you you have opportunities to create double teams for yourself, um, because that 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 no that lets an offense know that you know uh, that you're out there making some plays and they should know they should take notice. And so, I think um, you know as far as the run game, man, uh, the piggyback the piggyback scoop. Okay, that is probably <laughs> one of the most difficult difficult uh, run blocking schemes I've ever experienced. Um, you know, to this day, man, it's still one of the toughest 
uh, the toughest plays that, that I've that I've experienced. And so, um, you know, reach blocks are fine, double teams are fine. That's just a that's just a, you know determination and will, um, and a good and a good strike point uh, as far as double teams. But that piggyback scoop, man. Um, the way that the league goes nowadays, um, where they're running to that bubble as far as the the, the um, interior nose guard and and they're scooping that three technique, man. It's become it's become a bread and butter uh, type of run in the league. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, um, you know. And, and like I said, I, I sent you a message last night and said I I gotta bring it up about how I dropped you. Oh. Man. <laughs> That's what, that, you know, that, that's my claim to fame with you when people are like, man, you, you coach no drill. I was like, well, hey, defense line, I was offensive line. I said, but we were doing a drill, and I said, let's go. And, and I, knocked, I knocked him to a knee with one hit. Yeah. Said, now, now, he always has the excuse that he took out one of his other coaches when he went full go, so he didn't want to hurt me. Yeah, you know, you know, my, you know I'm on, I was tired. You know, the wind, I got the wind knocked out of me. So I might have. I might have been coming off a of Dom Patrol or something with Coach Wood or something. Like, oh. <laughs> nah, man, but we had we had so much fun at Wayne. Um, I mean, I I, I really I really uh, cherish those memories like a lot because uh, I mean it just was a it was like a coming out party for myself. I think you know just having to be be having an opportunity to be around y'all and you guys taught me a lot um, because you guys your program has been winning for a while and so that definitely was a uh, it was exciting to be a part of that type of culture. Definitely. Now, when you look at I me, mean, you've played all three levels. You played for a high level high school team. Mm -hmm. You played for a high level college team. Played in the NFL. Out of those three levels, if you could go play a game tomorrow, what would that game be? Man, if I can go play a game tomorrow, oh man, at any level, at any level. Oh, um. Probably uh, the Big Ten championship game against Wisconsin. Um, it was the first ever Big Ten championship game, uh, and like we we lost on a technicality of like the punter, the punter flared like he flared all out, and like he did this the greatest acting job I've ever seen in my life, and we lost the game. Like we returned the punt all the way down to the three yard line with under two minutes left. And they called roughing the punter. And when you when they showed the the replay on the screen, he ran right under his legs, never touched him, <clears throat> and the guy just like falls out. And they and they still kept the they still kept the flag. But um, you know to be out there, you know Monty Ball, James White, um, you know Russell Wilson, um, you know Travis Frederick was there. Um, man, I mean the the type of the type of talent that they had on the offensive line. Um, you know, that year, I think they had an Outland Trophy winner that year. Um, you know, our deep, our defense and offense was, was, we were, we were flying on all cylinders. I mean, Kirk Cousins and Le'Veon Bell. And I mean, that game was insane, man. Um, but it was just, it was just one of the greatest uh, games that I had played in, man, because it was going back and forth. And, you know, we just, we, we, we didn't want to lose, but, you know, we had some things come up short at the end, but, uh, but it was exciting, man. I think, that would probably be one of the games that I would definitely want to get back um, in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm totally understand that. It kind of reminds me um, on one of my Instagram questions. Somebody asked me, you know, like, what's the best game I ever played in? And yeah. I said, well, you know, I got two of them in 2003. We played Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech was number three in the nation. We yeah. played them on like a Wednesday night. Uh, we were like one and four. And so we yeah. were garbage in their eyes. And we came out and just waxed them. And then uh, that, that same year, we played uh, down at Miami. And um, Kellen Winslow catches a, a pass by his fingertips to give him a last-second field goal to win. Yeah. So it's like, you know, if I could ever get that one back to beat, you know, beat Miami, especially yeah. in the early 2000s, Miami was they were the, legit. They were the, yeah, they were the, yeah, they were the cream yeah, of the crop. Definitely. Sure. My buddy's the O-line coach down there now, and, and uh, I think he's going to help get them back with uh, Coach Diaz and so forth, get them back to – to that, that, that uh, you know, stardom that they were so used to, you know, in yeah. the early 2000s. Um, so, but, but hey, man, I'm, I greatly appreciate you coming on, just yeah. talking a little bit. And, uh, you know, I'm just, you know, trying to do my thing, trying to help, you know, increase the knowledge of, of the yeah. line game. Yeah. Uh, you know, I kind of laugh. I do mostly all the line stuff. And a few people reach out, like, can you do some defense? I'm like, well, I know what they're trying to do to get past this, but I'm not going to. Yeah. Know, I'm not going to make you think I can, I can help you get, you know, be a stud at defense. But O-line, I got gotcha. you. 
Man, no, I mean, I'm excited, man. You guys are doing some great things up there. When this whole uh, COVID-19 thing, you know, have a, has an opportunity to pass over, man, I'm definitely there. Um, one opportunity to work with some of the young minds up there and, you know, have an opportunity to just help them and um, continue to, to just share our knowledge, man. I, I'm, I'm excited and I'm glad that you uh, you're back uh, doing some doing some some uh, some gritty work with the O-line because I know you've been. <laughs> You've been with the desk scroll for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And, and then, you know, with the academy thing, the thing I love about it is I got to work with a lot of great young men all over the place. Yeah. I mean, I got people that – I got one that flew in from Kentucky that came in yeah. from St. Louis, Missouri, and just a chance to work with all these guys and try to help, you know, pass on that knowledge and, and uh, stay active in the game and then to, you know, help them when they go off to college, you know, to give them some of that advice when they go off to college. Um, because, as you know, when you go to college that first year, it, it, it don't matter where you go, it's tough. Yeah, that and, first year is tough. Yeah, and you got a whole lot of stuff to fight through to, to, to make sure you stay there. And, you know, it's like one young man I was telling the other day, I said, or it was a couple weeks ago, and then I said, hey, man, I remember the, the you know shedding the tears halfway through two a days, like, man, I'm done with this. I'm going home. And he's like, oh, man, you did that too? I'm like, everybody does it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, you know, it's just natural. And um, so, so I don't know if you saw down at the bottom. Tyler Eckberg sent you a little message. Says O line all day. Man, look at look, man. Let's get out of here, Egg. Look. <laughs> hey, man, look. All I know is we had some battles. Um, you know, I never, I, I, I definitely uh, remember those front seven inside days and all that, all those run blocking days back to back, and you know, and that camp higher ground and competing and stuff like that, and. Um, just for all you uh, uh, young old line, D-line out there, man, continue to work hard. Um, you know, don't let this COVID-19 or wherever, you know, is taking place stop you from your craft and stop you from getting better. And uh, just enjoy it, man. You know, we're in some difficult times and weird times, but, um, you know, we can do this thing together and, you know, continue to, to, to definitely, um, you know, pay respect to, to your sport. Um, I think that's the most important thing. So, um, stay prayed up and continue to work hard, fellas. Definitely. And that's a big thing. I tell my guys, make sure you keep working those legs. You yeah. Because, you know, for up here in Ohio, they set it down where no teams can do any workouts till at the minimum the 1st of July. Yeah. And that's so right. it's like I'm telling the guys, you got to do something because if you come in, your legs are going to die on you. Absolutely. And, you got to find, you know, find a big you a good hill. Find you a good hill. <laughs> Definitely. To run up, um, you know, even if, you know, go lift some mulch, go do something, man. I think. Um, you know, don't don't underestimate, you know, the power of, of just doing, you know, some some regular yard work or whatever. That's the, all that stuff helps, man. I think um, you got to be creative nowadays because everybody, you know, they don't have, you know, access to a gym. I think, um, you know, I was fortunate to put a couple things in a room and, you know, I'm, I'm still able to you know stay physically fit. But uh, you young bucks out there, man, don't be sitting on that video game or. Or just scrolling y'all fingers on on IG and Twitter, man. Like, go out there and earn it, man. Because, um, you know, the season not stopping for nobody. Unless you know exactly. this thing, yeah. Unless this thing gets completely out of hand, the season not stopping for nobody because there's too many people invested money into it. Uh, sponsors, donors, all that type of stuff. They gonna find a way to get their their, their stuff. Oh, in. So, definitely. And it's kind of interesting when you talk about that. And you know, I was listening with uh, Willie Anderson. He does an offensive line uh, mm -hmm. academy down in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he had his, his offensive line coach in college was my offensive line coach. Yeah. So I always mess with him, like, tell some stories. He's like, man, your stories are the same with my stories. That dude was crazy. <laughs> and, uh, and, but he was talking, you know, it's like with the NFL, it's like, you know, they get a lot of money from the TV. So it's like they're going to play with no fans in the stands. They don't you know? care. Yeah, exactly. And, and then it's like, you know, you look at the college, you know, what's the college game going to look out? Because they get a lot of money from the TV as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then the high schools are all talking about, like, do we move it to the spring? And, you know, some of the guys I work with, we talk about the recruiting right now for the uh, juniors going to be seniors next year and how this has really hurt them in recruiting because they can't yeah. get out the camps and they've all yeah. been canceled and so forth. And then, you know, it's one of those things where I've seen a lot of people be very creative with what they're posting on Twitter, tagging coaches and, and things of that nature. And uh, that's, you know, I reach out to my buddies. I kind of talk to them like, you know, how are you doing the recruiting with all of this, you know, especially for some of those uh, group of five schools that, yeah. you know, they're, they're not going to get that five star that everybody knows is the next great thing. Yeah. See, there's a, but there's a, see, that's the thing. The, the four and the five stars are the guys that are, you know, they're, they've been on the board for the last couple of years and whatnot. And so, you know, they're, they're going to be, you know, the recruiters are going to find ways to reach out to them, um, you know, outside of the dead period. And, 
Um, I think, you know, they don't necessarily have a lot of things to worry about, but it's those, it's those really, those tweeners, those guys that necessarily haven't been discovered. Um, those are the guys you got to continue to work, man. Um, if you don't have your name on some list, if, if somebody, if they aren't sending you the handwritten letters, not the typed up letters, not the ones <laughs> where, you know, they just got the school name and then, you know, everything is typed up. Like if they're, if they're actually sending you the handwritten letters, those are the ones you need to cherish. Those are the schools in which you uh, you need to uh, pay close attention to. And um, you got to continue to work, man. Um, like I said, the four- and five-star guys, they're set. Um, the ones that, that are necessarily on the bubble, um, you know, you can you could be a, a story of a guy that, that quit or you could be a story of a guy that pushed through and, um, you know, having an amazing turnout. Um, like I said, like I, I, I met Clay Matthews and I didn't – when I was in Green Bay and I, it really – it really was hard to believe that he was a walk on like that. You know what I'm saying? At USC. Um, it, and uh, it was hard to believe Le'Veon Bell was a one, two star recruit um, when he got to Michigan state. And, you know, and then it looks, it looks at what, you know, looking at what he, what he's turned himself into. And so um, you just never know where your journey is going to end up. You never know, um, you know, the different twists and turns that, you know, that can write the ship for you in the right way. So, you got to be consistent. You got to stay after it, um, and and don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it because um, it's definitely worth it if you can continue to, continue to push through. Definitely. Well, once again, Jarrell, man, I greatly appreciate you coming on and, and doing this with me. And uh, you know, I wish you nothing but the best. And as always, you know, this is home, and anything you ever need, just reach out. We always got you. Thank you again, man. I'm excited. We should do this. Uh, we should do this again, man. I'm, I'm I love uh, talking, definitely. And catching up with you guys, and. And I'm excited, man. I appreciate you having me on. Most definitely. Thank you so much. All right, my brother. Have a good one. Have a good one. You too. Stay, stay safe. <laughs> we'll do. You too. All right. Thank you guys so much uh, for watching in. Uh, also, we're going to be uh, posting this for any uh, questions. We'll be posting this uh, on our uh, YouTube channel. So if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, please go over uh, and uh, look up, look us up on YouTube and subscribe. I got a lot of other interviews and things planned here coming for the future. Um, that'll uh, interviews and so forth. And I'll get that information out, whether it's on Twitter or here on uh, Instagram as well. Uh, once again, just trying to spread the knowledge of O line, D line, just line and play as a whole football life uh, to make us all better. So thank you so much for tuning in. We'll greatly appreciate it. <laughs>